In Algebra 1, Section 5.6, this is your last section before the test, we're dealing with perpendicular lines. Now, perpendicular lines are the opposite of parallel lines. So if you remember to go back to the section where we deal with parallel lines, parallel lines means that lines that never intersect, so they have the exact same slope. Well, perpendicular lines, not only do they intersect, but they intersect in a specific way. They intersect so that when they intersect, they create a 90 degree angle. Okay, a right angle. So they intersect at 90 degrees. Okay? And also, if I took two slopes, because in parallel lines, the two slopes are exactly the same. In perpendicular, I know that they're parallel, I know that they're perpendicular if I multiply my two slopes of my two lines together and I get this magic number, which is negative one. Okay, that's the number I'm looking for. So for example, my first equation is y equals um, 3 over 4x plus 1. Now, my b right now I can ignore, okay, and just focus on my m, my slope of my first one. That's what m1 means, the slope of my first equation, which is 3 over 4, okay? And here's my second equation. I'm going to ignore the b and just focus on my m. So the, the slope of my second equation is negative 4 over 3. Now, I want to know if these are perpendicular or not. So I'm going to do this, multiply them, okay? So I'm going to do 3 over 4 times negative 4 over 3. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12, and 4 times 3 is 12, giving me 12 over 12, which is negative 1. Now, if it just gives you 1, it is not perpendicular, okay? It has to give you a negative 1 as the answer right here. So because this is negative 1, I can say, yes, they are perpendicular. If it's any other number besides negative 1, then they are not per perpendicular. Okay? So an easy way for me to do it is if I take this 3 over 4 and I flip it and I put negative. So 3 over 4 and I flip it, which gives me 4 over 3, and then the negative would be negative 4 over 3. So since this matches this perpendicular line, it would match. But we'll go over more of that in class. So go ahead and write this down. And we ha I have an example on the next board, so pause it, write it down. Okay, so we have this example and then you're home free. So it says here, write in slope intercept form, and slope intercept form, remember, is what? y equals mx plus b. Please remember that. y equals mx plus b form. The so, slope intercept form, the equation of the line passing through 5 over 2 to the line um, e y equals negative 1 half. y in slope intercept form, the equation of a line... Oh, it's supposed to say perpendicular to. My apologies. Perpendicular, or else what's the point? So write this right in slope intercept form the equation of the line passing through five two perpendicular to the line y equals negative one half x plus four. They give you this entire equation, but basically the only thing you need to focus on is this right here, my m. So my m one equals negative one half, right? So this is going to be the new part, trying to find the new slope. So basically my m2, so my m1 times my m2 has to equal negative 1. And I know that my m1 is negative 1 half. So I can solve for m2, okay, by basically, um, I can do one or two ways. I can solve by uh, multiplying both sides by 2 and then dividing both sides by negative 1. Or an easy way to do this, to find m2, the perpendicular, is I'm going to take my equation, I'm going to flip it. So instead of 1 over 2, I'm going to have 2 over 1. And because this is already a negative, then my new one has to be a positive. So my new slope is 2. Okay? So I flip it. If it's a whole number, I have to put it over 1 and then flip it. But in this case, it's a fraction. So I flip it, and then I change the sign. Okay, if it's a negative, then I turn it to positive. If it's positive, then I turn it to negative. Now, I can always check to see if it's right. Let me check. 
negative 1 half times 2 equals, okay, 2 over 1, negative 2 times, negative 1 times 2 is negative 2 over 2, which gives me negative 1. Here's my magic number. So this is my M2, new slope. Okay? This is my hardest part. Once I'm able to find the new slope, then after that is just um, the prior section of writing an equation. So once I know how to write an equation, this, that's when this comes into play. 5 over 2. Well, this gives me my x1, y1 for my magic equation, y equals mx plus b. Now, I, I have an x, I have a y, and I have a new slope, which is um, 2. So I'm going to use this information to find my missing number, which is b. Once I find b, then I'm good, right? So I'm going to plug it in. y is 2 equals m, which is 2, times x, which is 5, plus b, right? I'm going to, again, remember, I use one point to find my missing variable, which is b. So 2 equals 2 times 5, which is 10, plus b. I'm going to subtract both sides by 10. This gives me negative 8 plus b. I mean, sorry, negative 8 equals b. So now I know that b equals negative 8. So my final answer is y equals m, which is 2x, plus b, which is minus plus negative 8, which gives me negative Okay, y equals, so what this is telling me is that if I were to draw this and draw this, okay, because the slopes are exactly equal, my, line are gonna, my lines are going to hit each other at exactly 90 degree angles, but not only that, this line will pass through this point also. So all of this stuff that they're asking us is included in the equation, all right? So go ahead and try page 309, number 8 and 10, page 309, number 8 and 10, and I will see you in class.